In this video, I'm going to address some of the concerns about Michael Huddleston, uh, whose online personality is known as Inner Circle Trader. I'm going to give you my honest opinion, and I will try and keep it. Uh, I will try and keep it as brief as possible. I've got the background of my TradeStation account going. We'll see. Um, we will see whether the market wants to get down there or not. Um, guys, I first want to start with a lot of the. Um, a lot of the attacks, so to speak, or the, I won't even say attacks. I'm going to start with the criticisms that involve Michael Huddleston personally as a man. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you are unable to separate the message from the man, then, then you're really missing out on the, the value of his teachings, number one. And number two, you're lacking the you're just lacking the fundamental uh, intelligence or the nuance that's required to separate the man from the message. So, uh, I've listened to a lot of Vinny Eminis, Algo Boxes, and other people's concerns with Michael Huddleston, the man. Um, I have news for you. Uh, Michael says that he is bipolar, and you will sometimes see that come out in him. There's no doubt about that. He does go on extended rants. He does talk about things that are not directly market-related. Um, many of those things, I think, have, have value anyways for your personal life. But regardless of that, um, you have to be able, in your life, to separate the message from the man. So while I understand the concerns that, oh, you know, sometimes he goes on rant, sometimes he goes on tangent, sometimes he does this and that. Uh, one of the things that you have to understand about his, history's geniuses, so to speak, is that they are often on the verge of insane. I mean, look up, look up history's real geniuses. They, they, in many ways, they would seem like crazy people to you. It's just the nature of how things works, guys. They're, you have to be able to separate the content from the man himself. So, Really, any, any sort of criticisms or critique that I see about Michael Huddleston that just revolve around him as a man, regardless of his fanciful stories, regardless of his past, um, who cares, guys? I mean, you really need to be able to, to go beyond that. The second concern that I hear a lot is that the community surrounding Michael, as in, you know, the smart money concepts community, people trying to sell ICT courses, people, you know, really trying to basically con artist his name, that has nothing to do with him. And he outright tells you to not listen to the people that are trying to sell his stuff. Um, I'm not trying to sell you anything on this channel. Of course, I want to grow a YouTube channel and make ad revenue off of it. I'm not, I have not hidden that from you. Of course, I want to make money off of my YouTube and off of ad revenue. That is not a secret. I'm not hiding that. Uh, why would I hide that, guys? It's I'm putting in real work. I'm putting in daily videos. So, of course, I want to make money from my labor. Um, but I'm not selling you a course, and I'm not selling you anything if, if you don't want to buy it. Maybe I will make a course one day. We'll see. But if I do make a course, it's going to have a lot of value, and it's going to be worth your time. Um, and of course, you know, as with anything else, guys, you have to be able to, number one, you have to be able to separate the man from the message. So Michael is not a perfect man. I'm not a perfect man. There is only one man that has ever been perfect. His name is Jesus Christ. And other than that, we're all very flawed. Michael's flawed. I'm flawed. All of the people that are trying to sell his stuff are very flawed. Um, so if your critique has to do with Michael the man, uh, that's really a, an irrelevant critique. If your critique has to do with the people trying to sell his material, third-party material, when he outright says, do not listen to those people, do not buy their Telegram courses, do not, do not buy what they're selling if they're trying to teach his stuff, if he outright tells you that and then you go on and critique him because of people in his quote-unquote smart money concepts community, okay, well, that, that critique is irrelevant as well. Um, on kind of the more substantive stuff, uh, a lot of people will say that Michael's content is recycled. And I sort of understand that critique, but guys, once you really... Um, I, I, I've shown this before, um, but these are two notebooks full of, of notes on his material. I've studied all of his material, all of his videos. Um, and this is, of course, my trading journal right here. Just a little dollar, dollar store trading trading or uh, journal um, you know if you're if you are 
brand new and you are just getting exposed to Michael Huddleston's concepts, in many ways they might appear to you to be similar to other market or price price action based concepts. But um, I have some authority on this, guys, when I say this, as uh, virtually no one I've ever heard of has put in as much work into Michael's material as me. Uh, it is not the same. Uh, it is not Wyckoff. It is not supply and demand. It is not support and resistance. Um, just to give you an example of how it's not the same, no other system literally gives you macro times. I mean, guys, come on. You, you know that. I know that. You know that. If you're really being honest with yourself, you know that no other system out there is teaching you the time of the day that the market should do something. Okay? So let's not pretend like that's the same as supply and demand and that's the same as support resistance. It's not. Um, now, do some of his models, like for example, the Model 20, I'm, I'll be honest with you, does the Model 22, the Model 2022, does it kind of look like a head and shoulders or an inverse head and shoulders? Yeah, it does. But guys, I've also read Thomas Bulkowski's Chart Patterns book, Thomas Bulkowski, Classic Chart Patterns. I have read that book from cover to cover. I know what a head and shoulders pattern is. I know what a bull flag pattern is. I know what a pennant is. I know candlestick patterns. I know, for example, what a Mary Bozu candle is. I know what a doji candle is. I know what a spinning top candle is. I know what a, a, an evening cloud cover is. There's really very few candlestick patterns uh, that I don't know about. And I'm telling you right now that this is not the same as classic chart patterns, even though sometimes it might look like it. Guys, it might also sometimes look like supply and demand. It is not supply and demand because he's using a lot of candles from way far back or price action from way far back that no one is ever going to reference in supply and demand. Um, and then a lot of people will say that his fair value gaps are similar to Al Brooks micro gaps. Guys, again, you're not talking to someone who's not familiar. I've watched Al Brooks course. I know who Al Brooks is. I have watched his course and it's not the same. Okay. His micro gaps are not the same as Michael's fair value gaps. They are not. I promise you that they are not. Um, Al Brooks does not say that the micro gaps can invert, that they are draws on liquidity, et cetera, et cetera. And guys, let's talk about classic support and resistance. He uses classic support and resistance, but in the opposite. He targets highs and lows because there's liquidity uh, or stop orders, if you want to be accurate, stop orders. I call it liquidity. I understand that it's not really the definition of liquidity. Again, I've studied classic support and resistance, and I'm telling you that uh, it's not the same, guys. It's not the same because it's not telling you – support and resistance is basically telling you that price should turn around at an old high or low Michael is teaching you that you should target highs and lows for your profit targets, guys. So come on, it's not the same. Um, it, is it Wyckoff? No, it's not Wyckoff, guys. He does have a market maker buy and a market maker sell model. In some ways, it looks similar to Wyckoff's accumulation and distribution model, but it's really not the same. Uh, again, I've studied Wyckoff's material. I've studied Trader Sumo's material. There's nothing under this sun when it comes to trading that I have not personally looked at, including harmonic patterns, including candlestick patterns, including support resistance, including everything. And I'm here to tell you from a position of experience and authority now on ICT that whatever you think it is, it is not. It is an algorithmic trading system. Okay? No other system is going to teach you, hey, the market is mostly automated and it's driven by algorithms or it's driven by an algorithm except for when it's not, which is economic releases and manual intervention. So geopolitical events, shocks to the system, and economic releases, those things are what we call periods of manual intervention when the, the automation in the market kind of ticks out. So it, when it comes to the criticism that, oh, he derived his ideas from someone else, number one, guys, let me, let me just first say that how do you think music is made? How do you think that new songs are written? Guys, they all use the same four chords. How do you think that new art, if I want to become an artist, let's say I want to become kind of like a, an expressionist or I want to, you know, abstract painting. I study the works of Picasso. I study the works of Renault. I study the works of, of ancient Greek and ancient Roman uh, sculptors. If I want to go in a classical style, like guys, you have to learn your ideas from somewhere. New music doesn't just come from nowhere. It is inspired by other music. New art does not come from nowhere. It is inspired by other art. So the criticism that his ideas are just rehashed, they're not rehashed, number one. But number two, who cares? I mean, really, you need to look at these things objectively and go, all ideas have to stem from other ideas, period. I mean, come on, guys. You need to use a little bit of logic here. Number two, let's say that you throw out 
guys, let's say that you throw out the fair value gaps, you throw out the breaker blocks, you throw out all of his, his PD arrays, premium discount arrays or entry models, and you just focus on his other message. So what is some of his core message? Risk management, break even, the break even principle, meaning keeping your account uh, at break even as often as possible to preserve your capital, using risk management, avoiding economic releases, avoiding the New York Stock Exchange open, especially when you have an economic release, Avoiding the AM session during non-farm payrolls, avoiding the AM session when you have uh, the consumer price index release, looking at your economic calendar for when you expect the market to be more volatile. Guys, those are all fundamental principles of day trading. You can't say that he's wrong because he's not. So if you have any criticisms like, oh, his, his material is just rehashed, again, don't use his entry models. Just look at his risk management. Look at, look at using the economic calendar. Those are all real things that affect the market, that are really affecting the market, and you can't say that he's wrong because he's not. So I'm just going to re rehash the common criticisms of ICT. Number one, let me just say that I think that his recent material, I want to be very clear about this, I think that ICT's material from 2022 to 2023 is far superior than his material from 2016 and 2017. They're both useful but I do believe that his most recent material is, is way more valuable than his older material. So I'll just tell you that. Um, those are some of the common criticisms of ICT that I see. Number one, if you attack the man, not the message, that's called an ad hominem attack. And your point, you, you are not making logical sense. That is not logic. That is an ad hominem attack. And that, so I, I disregard you. Number two, if you are attacking... Uh, if you're attacking sort of his, his old material, well, I don't really use his old material to begin with. Number three, if you, if you say that his material is rehashed, I can assure you that it's not from someone who knows all the other material. I assure you that it's not, number one. But number two, how do you think that new ideas are formed in the first place in any domain ever to exist? Where, like, ideas build off of each other, dumb dumb. So those are some of the common criticisms of ICT that I wanted to address um, I hope I hope that you I hope that you found this video useful. Of course, guys, these are my opinions. They, I'm not saying that this is the gospel truth. There is only one perfect man ever to have walked the earth. His name is Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm not perfect. Michael Huddleston is not perfect. No one is perfect. You're not perfect. And so again, guys, I just wanted to address some of the common criticisms of Michael Huddleston or Inner Circle Trader. Um, and I hope that I hope that this assuages some of your fears. I'm just going to be perfectly honest with you guys. Don't go buy third-party material. You need to listen to the source. You need to listen to the man himself. I 100% agree that you should not be buying courses and buying his community, buying the people trying to sell smart money concepts. I don't believe in smart money concepts. I just believe in ICT. I just believe in Michael Huddleston. That's it. I do not believe in smart money concepts or whatever, that I'm trading like a bank or whatever. I think that's all kind of nonsense. But he does teach real principles of day trading, of risk management, of using risk reward, of, of looking at the market in terms of timing, in terms of liquidity, uh, you know, al algorithmically. I think that these are, these are all things that are real. Uh, I've seen over time that, that they are real. And, and that's really all I have to say about it, guys. So this was addressing some common concerns about ICT or Michael Huddleston. I hope you found this video useful. Bye-bye.